So, Graz, I guess the big concern is that Kirk Cousins is coming back from that Achilles tear that he suffered late last yeah. year. Uh, how cautious have they been bringing him along, and do you have any indication really where he is at in terms of his recovery? Yeah, he has been able to be out there and do some on-field activity, some throwing. We've seen it. Uh, there's been some uh, film of it. Uh, so that's encouraging. The Falcons believe uh, he's in good shape in terms of his recovery from uh, the Achilles injury. Now, when they start to get uh, you know, into training camp late next month and you're in situations where uh, there's, there are contact practices, you can't make contact with the quarterback, but where there's contact going on around him, they may be a little bit careful just to make sure uh, he stays out of any potential trouble in situations like that but so far I have the, obviously everything this time of year is non-contact there aren't any any questions about anything like that so they're trying to to be appropriately cautious but I think the feeling in Atlanta is that he'll be okay certainly to start the season and should be uh, if not a full participant then something like it uh, once training camp rolls around yeah we should get a good look hopefully at Michael Penix Jr. in the preseason um, so Mina aside though from Cousins being healthy and really looking like himself pre-injury. What else needs to happen for the Falcons to take the next step offensively? Yeah, a player that I think can take a big leap is their wide receiver one, Drake London, whose production thus far has not really been commensurate with his draft status, largely because of inconsistent quarterback play. Uh, but when you watch him, something that's really jumped out to me, Hannah, is how smooth he looks as a route runner on in-breaking stuff. Uh, posts, crossers, digs, slants. On those concepts last year, again, despite the quarterback play, he actually ranked near the top of the NFL and, and uh, catch rate over expected. And in Kirk Cousins, he gets a quarterback who on those same in-breaking routes before he got hurt last year was first amongst all quarterbacks in EPA per dropback. So I see this as a very good marriage between the quarterback and the receiver. And I think that marriage will be key to whether this Falcons offense lives up to expectations. Yeah, obviously they're hoping for London to have a breakout year. Only six touchdown catches in his first two seasons. But let's talk defense. Acho, we know Reem Morris is a defensive-minded coach. What do they need to clean up on that side of the ball? They need to get more pressure on the quarterback, Hannah. And last year, uh, this Atlanta Falcons team had 42 sacks. We was tied for 21st or 22nd in the NFL. And people said, okay, well, why not address it in the draft? Well, they did, just not the first round. Second round, they went and got Braylon Trice, who two years ago had more pressures in college than Will Anderson, who's been a dominant player. They also got Brandon Dorless, who you see on your screen, a big-time interior defender from Oregon. Then they also got a defensive tackle from Clemson named Rook Orororo. So Braylon Trice, Rook Orororo, Brandon Dorless, you see Rook right there, big number 33. Big, huge, can get after the quarterback, and Zion Logue out of Georgia. So they address defensive line in the draft. They just need those guys who are there to get after the quarterback, along with Arnold Ebikede, who's in his second year as well, who had six sacks last year. So young guys have to step up this year for Atlanta. I mean, they only had 81 sacks over the last three seasons. Every other team in the NFL had at least 99 during that span.